people who have cancer, they get the best care, their insurance covers it, and, um, and they're able to survive, God willing, if they, it can be eradicated. But for a heroin addict, you know, the insurance companies only want to cover maybe three days of care for the detox, and then they don't want to do a long-term treatment. Uh, if you're on Massachusetts Health, uh, you have a better shot at it of getting care. Uh, private insurance is much more difficult, which I have private insurance, and, you know, they, um, they don't want to help. You know, this I can't do out of network because when I wanted to send my son out of state, they wouldn't um, pay for it. So my, when I sent my daughter out of state, I had to pay for it out of pocket. That's why it cost us almost 100 grand, grand for her treatment. Uh, you know, um, Dane's struggle was real. You know, and if, um, if I only understood the disease early on, uh, I could have had, I could have probably saved both my children from this terrible disease. Uh, you know, um, the pharmaceutical companies put out that Oxycontin. They got sued because they, did, they said that they did testing and, that, and it wasn't highly addictive when they did do testing and it was highly addictive. Uh, and it's still out in the street. Now they've just approved that um, Oxycontin for children under 12 in a liquid form. Uh, are you kidding me? You know, is money worth that powerful that it's worth destroying entire families over. You know, since this, I mean, I know Percocet has been out for a long time. I don't remember hearing about people going to heroin from Percocet. It's only when this Oxycontin come out, you saw a huge increase of heroin addiction. Now, heroin, you know, hasn't been that prevalent. I mean, it was prevalent in the 60s, but you didn't hear of it in the 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, you're, it's, it's, it's taken a whole new dynamic. How many overdoses a week? Uh, if you look at the statistics, since my son's passed, there, there was like 20 overdoses in one week alone. In one week. I mean, so this is what we're up against. Uh, it is, it's big. It, it, is, it is so big. Uh, my, it has affected my parents, my siblings. Everybody is affected by the loss of my son. Um, my sister lost her son to addiction in June of 2014. Uh, so I do believe in genetics. Uh, there's not drug addiction in my immediate family, but there is in my extended family. So um, I think, you know, that people, you know, genetically, they have it in them. And if they have the predisposition that they're going to struggle with addiction. So my suggestion to people that haven't ever tried a drug not to ever start. You know, um, my, do my kids started early. Uh, my sister's children started later. And, you know, it was much harder for her to, to beat it because they were adults. I mean, my kids were young and minors at the time, so it was easy for me to start getting the help and to seek help. Uh, again, I didn't get anywhere in Massachusetts because they... Um, they just never really addressed it. I, I am very pleased with the, the new governor, Charlie uh, Baker. Uh, I, he's really hitting it head on, and um, I'm really pleased with that because it has to be known, you know, and we have to start, like, helping these addicts because these addicts are your daughter, your cousin, your friend, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father. No one will be immune from this if this keeps going at this rate, not one person. Uh, I have to find a new normal. I, my husband and I have to find a new normal. I have a grief counselor that comes to my house every week and, and it's because I can't go out. I have become uh, recluse. I, I don't want to socialize with people and I was always doing things. Um, I just, I'm uncomfortably numb and I am struggling and I am trying, I'm fighting, I'm trying to find a way to get through this. But the loss of my son was senseless. It was something that could have been avoided had I gotten the care that I needed way back when. You know, when he wanted it, it was already into a full blown. I was trying to get to it before it even became a problem. And I couldn't do it. You know, so um, 
I hope this helps. I, you know, I really enjoy um, talking with Taylor Trump. I think she's very passionate about this, and I, I'm hoping that she impacts people, and I'm hoping that she makes a difference because I think if you could just help one person, one addict, you've done your job. You know, um, I have done volunteer work in drug court. Uh, since my son passed, I haven't been working, but I did help an addict and went to drug court. And um, I was really sad to see that the other attorneys in the conference, they had no idea what they were talking about. Uh, I had, I'm well educated on addiction, so I, I knew what the needs were. And um, these lawyers ha didn't have a clue. I, I mean, and, and it was sad because I felt that if you're working in drug court, you should be trained. You should know, have a, you know, either dealing with it yourself or be trained on addiction so that you know how to help your client. Uh, I don't think attorneys are effective in helping their client if they have no clue about addiction. Uh, I think that's the most important thing is education. You know, um, so, you know, bottom line is heroin is no longer an epidemic, it is a pandemic. And it's really not the heroin that I'd be worried about. I would be more worried about the gateway drug because that's what leads to the heroin. So uh, marijuana, yes, it is definitely a gateway. My son admitted that to me. That came right from an addict. My daughter says it to this day. Marijuana is a gateway. And, you know, and if you don't think so, you better think again because I only have one daughter now, you know, and my son's not here, and his first drug of choice was smoking pot. Um, I thank you, uh, Taylor. I just want to make sure I've covered everything. Uh, she's asking me how his drug addiction affected my family. Uh, my family is no longer complete. Uh, you know, we're very family oriented. We would, you know, we're Italian, so we would do the big feast. Uh, I can't even cook a meal because everything reminds me of my son because my son loved it the most. He loved when I would be making the ravioli and help me. And that's, you know, as a matter of fact, he just put away my pasta roller and I can't even take it out because that's the last thing he touched in my kitchen. Um, you know, uh, how has addiction affected you mentally and emotionally? Uh, I am definitely emotionally not well, mentally. Uh, I am uh, traumatized and I guess you would call it PTSD. Uh, because when I found my son, that's the image I cannot get out of my head, uh, trying to save him and seeing that look and knowing he was gone, even though the paramedic said that he had a pulse, I knew my son was gone. A mother knows. And the, the, the weird thing is, is when I woke up, I had this awful feeling and I don't know how I knew, but I knew something was wrong. Um, how was the lost of a loved one affected you and your family uh, on every level, on every level. Everything is a new normal. Uh, it's been, you know, he died in July. We're now into November. The holidays is coming. Thanksgiving is next week. And uh, I'm dreading, I'm dreading the holidays because those were special times with my kids. My daughter lives in California and they would be together on the holidays. and to only have my daughter uh, in, in affecting her. Uh, I have to be on, keep myself in constant check that I, don't, um, that I don't make her feel like she's not valued because I'm so consumed with, with my son's death that I, I, I'm tending to forget that I still have a daughter. And um, that's the hardest thing for me, you know, because I don't ever want her to feel that she's second best. And I find myself doing that, and um, that scares me because I don't want her to feel like that. Um, what feelings did I have when I found my child was addicted to drugs? My feeling was, is I'm going to fix this because I've always been a fixer. Uh, now, like I said, this disease is much bigger than you or I, and I, uh, I never say never. My daughter's been clean, but I am still on top of her with her addiction because she's recovering, and uh, she could relapse at any moment from this grief that we deal with every day, you know. And uh, and I am you know blessed by God that she hasn't and that she's staying strong for her brother, you know, in memory of her brother. Um, so 